today is August the 7th, 2020, and this is interview with my dad, Raymond Joseph Cassette, and uh, we have lots of family here. There's Roberta, Dad, Lyle, Raylene, Daryl, Rhonda, this is her butt, there's Rhonda, hi, <laughs> and we're just going to ask... Oh, Cassidy, there's Cassidy. We're camping and we're just asking him a few questions. So, Dad, when and where were you born? When and where? November 24th, 1939, in Estevan Hospital. Okay. How did you know how you got your name? Who were you named after, or how did you get your name? Do you know where no, Raymond I, or Joseph came from? I know where Joseph came from, okay. definitely. All of Dad's brothers' first name was Joseph, but they they went by their second name. So his oldest son had to be Joseph, but okay. went Raymond Joseph rather than Joseph Raymond. Because I still would have been called Raymond. You know. Okay. Um, your mom, do you know what her full name is, when and where she was born, where she grew up, or any interesting stories about your mom? Uh, no, I... Not sure where she was born. That's okay. I think, I think in the States. But okay. Mom only had about grade three education. Holy. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what was her full name? I th she didn't, she just had Emma. She didn't have no a name? No second names, no. Cool. Yeah. So any other interesting stories about her? Just that she had her grade three? That's okay. She liked, she liked whiskey. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> Growing up too? I don't know. So. Yeah, I'm not sure about that part. Yeah. No, when you grew up, did she drink whiskey? Oh, yeah. 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 You used to give her a slobber glass when she came to oh, our house. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I'd give it to Norbert Cassette. He was, did I, is all this going to be recorded? It's okay. He's passed away now, I tell him. About. <laughs> and he was uh, worse than Catlin, as far as being a little slow. And so I give him the slobber gas. And, Drink a little any white beer, <laughs> and I'd be laughing. And Rose finally got mad at me because I was laughing. <laughs> and then he'd wipe here. <laughs> he went on and on. He never did. We never told him. He never figured it out. Yeah. Okay. What about your dad? Do you remember his full name? Um, where he was born? Uh, where he where he grew up? Stuff about your dad. Talk okay. about your dad. Yeah, dad. Uh, Probably was grown, born in Esteban, just a few miles from where our farm is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and so else? he would have grown up in that area yeah. then, his whole farm? the whole, whole family yeah. grew up there. Yeah. yeah. His full name? It's uh, Joseph Charles Gerard Cassette. Oh, he had four names. Okay. Yeah. And do you know where any of those came from? Well, you already said Joseph yeah. was the family name or whatever. Right. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. He was a second oldest son. Okay. Clem was oldest and dead. Yeah. So his family was all kind of around here then. Too, oh yeah. Huh? yeah. Yeah. I think there's about nine in that family. Holy. I believe. Yeah. All right. What about your brothers and sisters? Do you know who all your brothers and sisters, any of their birthdays, all their full names? <laughs> Rose would know That's that. That's <laughs> okay. This is you, yeah. and it doesn't matter if you don't. Well, I know, I know. You know all their names. Yeah, names. Okay. Anton was born in July. Bob's birthday is August 7th. Today 7th? August 8th, actually. Oh, so oh it is tomorrow. 8th? Okay. Yeah. I'm close. The same and day was, as your mom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same day as my mom. And uh, Marie was born in July 2nd or 3rd. Okay. And Irene was born in end of August, I think. Okay. August something. Aunt Irene, actually, she's August the 15th, because okay. she's the day after me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a day this older than her. This is all recorded now. Oh, yeah, she's the day before. Yes, she is. Yep, you're that right. August yep. the 13th. Those yep. keep track of all that. That's okay. Yes. Um, did you share a room with any of your siblings? Mm-hmm. Brother and Aunt slept, and I slept together all the time. In the same bed, even? The same bed, yeah. until I got married. Wow. Yep. Yep. I didn't know that. I got married and moved out. All was in the same bed, yeah. Huh. So you got along pretty good then? Oh yeah. Yeah. All your whole family, your brothers and sisters. Oh got, yeah. 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 
Um, your grandparents, do you remember anything about your grandparents? Like grandparents on dad's side? Yeah, or start, start with your, grand, your dad's side, yeah. yeah. My, my grandma cassette, or dad's mom, died when dad was about 40. Oh, I wow. barely knew her, I was pretty small. And probably that's the only time I saw dad cry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and any other? Cancer, I think. Uh, and then his dad lived to be quite an old man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who was his dad? Alphonse. Oh, right. His name was Alphonse. And his youngest son was Alphonse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and your mom's? Mom's, mom's dad was parents? Anton Johnner. Okay. And mom, we have picked his, her mom, we have pictures yeah. of about five generations yeah. of her. Yeah. She lived to be an old lady, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Great Grandma Johnner. That's yeah. all I knew her as. What was her first name, or do you know? Gee. That's okay. Yeah. You don't have to. Should know it. That's okay. You don't have to know anything. All right. This is all just. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any special toys or blankets or teddy bears or anything when you were growing up? No, very few toys. Yeah. Yeah. We just create our own games. Yeah. What would be some of the games that you would have typically played with your siblings? Well, for one, we got a crokinole for everybody together at Christmas time, so that was our present for everybody. Yeah. Who's played crokinole. Yeah. So you guys are all good crokinole players then. Well, we had practice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's something I do remember though, and I'll never forget it. There was an old bachelor, John Rusnak, called him Diamond John, that lived close to my court, a mile west and two miles, or a mile north. He lived and he actually hunted diamonds. <laughs> but anyway, and he worked in the mines some too. But anyway, he actually hauled water, drinking water from our farm in a pail, walk across, kitty cross the country. But he had a bicycle and he'd ride to town with dad once in a while. When, uh, and then he'd leave his bike there. I never had a bike, never knew how to ride, oh, yeah. so I learnt on this bicycle, oh, my or tried bicycle, and I crashed into the well, the drink water well. Oh dear. I think I broke a spoke or two, and I oh, kind of no. fixed as much as I could. I don't know if you ever figured it out, but I never told him. <laughs> so like three miles he would haul water, like buckets of it water. It would be, uh, no, it would be a mile west and um, a mile north. Uh, Oh, that, like two shack. Miles. that shack. Oh, that shack. Yeah. 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 Oh. And the holes that he dug for diamonds was unreal. He believed there was diamonds there. Huh. Yeah. Did he ever find any? Pardon? Did he ever find any? No. no. He finally dug his own drinking water well, shallow well along the road lots. Got good drinking water. Huh. Yeah. huh. So he would have been one of your closest neighbors that you would remember then? Well, it would be Brokenshire's oh, place. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then he was. Yeah. Good yeah. friends of Dad's, yeah. What would be some of your spring, summer, or winter memories? Some of the things that you would have done with your siblings or your friends? Like, what age? You... Whatever age. Yeah. School, it was just school and work, you know. We yeah. didn't, we yeah. didn't have, we didn't, couldn't play hockey. I never really learned how to skate. Finally, Talking about Dad had a pair of goalie skates, and I used them on dugouts once in a while. Got together all us young guys. I just marvel at the guys that had good skates. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> I think like toboggan. You wouldn't have a toboggan. Oh yeah, we yeah. had a toboggan. Oh, yeah. 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 So what about ball or soccer or anything like that in the summertime? Learned ball at school. Okay. We always had a school ball team, like the the rural schools. They had each school had a ball team, and you go to school to school every about once a month. Somebody would pick you up the big truck and line it right in the back, like a green truck, drive to the next school, play a game, oh game of my ball, gosh. and go back. So, do you remember what position you played, or did you? Oh, I played. I didn't remember was a pitcher, first base, catcher quite a bit. Oh, okay. And first base. And would your brothers and sisters been playing with you, or not no, necessarily? They, no. It seemed like when they went to school, it wasn't done as much. It kind of outgrew that. Mm. School. They had an annual sports day to go to the other schools oh, for that. Right, yeah. They competed in that, but not ball. Did you have any? Oh, okay, go through the homes that you've lived in. Do you remember where you grew up? Okay. What your where your home was, and then go through the. Through I was the born years. on the Garno farm, and that's right where Rafferty Dam is now. Marlene was saying just, you just, or no, Daryl was saying yeah. you just showed them. Yeah. Born there. 
lived four years of my life there. And then we moved to the present farm and grew up, lived there until I got, until I moved to Estevan. Okay, where you presently are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about the time you had to live in the greenery? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That house was half the size it was when we sold it, and Dad's family's getting bigger, so he added on to it. He even took the roof off and changed the direction of it. Oh my God. And while it was being constructed, I lived in a granary with the carpenter. <laughs> and that was Ross the Blah's uncle. Holy. He was a bachelor. Huh. He, but he was a carpenter. And I, wow. Yeah. Do you remember oh. any of your pets growing up? Did you have a, a dog or some cats or anything? I had a horse. Yeah. You had a horse. I didn't know that. Dad sold it to a guy by the name of Quist to run, run a grocery store. Got good money for it, but the horse stayed at the farm because he had no place to keep it. So I got to be my horse, finally he gave it back to us, and I had to ride it all the way to McCoon one time to get bread. And oh, she had a colt. Man. We had two colts that were almost identical. Wow. Yeah. Silver was the horse's name. <laughs> yeah. But it was brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you have to go to McGoon for bread? Why didn't you go to Estevan? Well, you had to go to somebody who had a stud. It had to be a palomino. Oh, to get bread. Oh, I thought he meant bread, bread, too. No, like to get the horse to McGoon. So God. Pick up no, so I'd have to ride her. And I, I was pretty young, and I had to ride it all the way to McCoon, kind of back roads. And then the guy who owned the stud charged the fee. And he did his job, and I rode her back home that night, and she was in full. Wow. wow. Yeah. Did you have any jobs? You obviously worked on the farm lots. Did you ever have any jobs off the front farm? Yeah. Uh, when I quit school, the first year out of school, well, let's back up. When I was still going to school, uh, Bill Blackburn had a thrashing machine that you would uh, haul bundles and Dad had a good team of horses and the biggest rack in the country and I, I pitched bundles for that thrashing yeah. machine and I was still going to school. I didn't get started school for late because I was thrashing. Need to finish that. So I guess I was about 14 maybe, something wow. like that. And my arms wrists would get so sore but you try to, we had a field pitcher but no, no. A picture that helps with going to the thrash machine, but none in the field to help you load. Huh. Yeah. So why your wrist? Like, did you actually have to kind of flick it? No, or? the ba bundles get heavy after all day long, and your just wrist just play out. You know? huh. So I wore wrist bands to help strengthen them. This is what ache. Wow. So but then, they don't bother you now, though. No, no. Wow, that's good. I'll just remember that because it was. And Willie Brogan started pick me up in the mornings about 5:30. We always had breakfast. Before we started at the rink and uh, where were we thrashing at and they brought lunch out for noon then we had a dinner and a supper and then you go home. Yeah. Wow. So as a like 14, 15 year old now your dad is losing somebody from the farm if you got a job off the farm. Yeah, well, dad would kind of work it out that I was able to do it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That part I I guess I was lucky that I got money for that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, that then this the year I quit school, after I completed grade 10, Dad said, if you want to go to school, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So I stayed home. <laughs> it was just that simple. And then uh, in the fall, uh, I got a job with uh, Creighton Ross, the boundary boundary dam of where the power plant is, all the reservoir there, there was trees that they're cleaning out because they're going to be filled with water, and there's telephone and power lines in there. So we moved all the power lines out of there and telephone lines up oh, on top, really? rerouted them. Huh. That lasted right to the, oh gosh, it got pretty cool time we got done. Oh, but, yeah. That sounds like a huge job though. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. physical. Yeah. That's the first time I got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want to hear more on that one. Uh, How old were you then? I was 16 then. Yeah. Uh, wow. The winding up, we'd always, we, he went to town, got a bottle of Johnny Walker <laughs> and brought it home in the afternoon. We had no mix. Mix in your coffee. So the second <laughs> coffee, the third coffee, it tasted so good. 
<laughs> and, and anyway, that night's when the Bruins first started playing in Esteban, and we never missed a game. Had full intention to make it to the Bruins game, but hell, I couldn't walk. <laughs> the boss drove me home. I don't know how all my truck got home. Maybe the next day I picked it up. Oh I just went gosh. to bed. <laughs> so I was, yeah, couldn't walk. You had your own truck at that age? Or like a farm truck? A farm truck. Okay. Yeah, I didn't own my own. Yeah. Yeah. And what did Grandpa and Grandma think of that, or did they know? I don't think it caught heck, yeah. Because <laughs> you were always, yeah. Mom says, Rose said, Mom said I was her mom's boy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just Bob and Aunt. And <laughs> so, can, sorry, can, is this bugging you then? Not I'm, at okay. all. You're, I remember you doing the telephone poles or climbing yeah. up for a lot of the neighbors. That's where yeah, I that's learned. because of your job doing that. Because I learned it on that there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Climb on those stupid poles with spurs and go all the way yeah. to the top. And, huh. Wow. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about some of your school memories? What schools did you go to? And you've already said you quit school in grade 10 or after grade 10, yep. but can you tell us about anything you remember oh, about school? That's a school? long story because I started out in 4J. That was a where you live right there, what do they call oh, them? Residential, residential school. Because mom, sister was a nun. She taught there. And I started school with Marie the same year. I was five, but I would be six in November. Okay. And she was six and would be seven and anyway. Whatever, yeah. I was a little young to start, but I went there. And I'll never forget it. Mom and Dad drove us there to see Auntie Margaret one Sunday, and they did not tell us. They told us, they told us to go down and get ice cream at a store there in Forgy. We went and come back, got ice cream cones, and they were gone. So Auntie Margaret had to explain it. Yeah. Holy. Oh. So it was tough. And so you stayed there for a while. Then? Oh yeah. Yeah. So the boys were separated from the girls. I don't know, in class, maybe we were mixed, but we had our own dorms and you never, I never see Marie already at all. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did so not know that. So you ended up moving back from there. Did Auntie Marie stay after you came back? And then I got sick in February, seriously sick. And they come and pick me up with snowmobiles because the roads were plugged. And went by snowmobile to Estevan Hospital for a few days and then home. And I was done school then. Hmm. And Marie lasted till Easter. And they, she quit. Mom had a nervous breakdown that year too. Oh my gosh! They just thought it was the right thing to do because yeah. schools were three miles away, and you know to drive them to school and it was just too much. This would be the ideal thing, but it didn't work out. Wow! So then the following year we went to Madigan School, our second school. And where is that? It's uh. Just approximately, you know, like three miles Torquit, east Torquit. of the farm, straight south of Douse. Oh, okay. Um, Iron Douse lives right close to there now. Oh, okay. Yeah. We started going to school at Madigan and we took grade one over again. So Marie and I were in the same grade, all eight grades. Holy. She quit after eight, eight, and I was kept on to nine and ten. Yeah. Marie quit in grade eight and went, got married. No yeah, way. She got married right after grade eight. So do you think um, Grandpa and Grandma said that? It's okay for you to quit school, or she was the one who wanted to. That or Uncle Roger just want like how, how did that? No, Marie had no intention of going back to school. In those yeah. days, grade eight that was pretty good education. Mom yeah. had grade three, you remember? Yeah. Grade eight, yeah, it was something. Do you know what Grandpa had? I think seven. Okay. Yeah. So you but did Dad great. To could get read to 10. well. Mom yeah. could hardly read. Yeah. Wow, did not know that. Yeah. So you went to that same Madigan school till the end of grade eight? No, I went to Madigan until about grade three. And then where we lived, we're in the Brown School zone. And there got to be a arguments amongst all the rate payers that we did not belong to that school. Oh, it was dear. full. They kicked us out, made us go to Brown. We did not want to leave. These are all your friends. Yeah. So starting grade four, went to Brown School, which is about the same distance away. Daryl and I went by it now, just a sign up today. And whereabouts is this? It's uh, two miles west and a mile south. Just yes, south of, south of Chasing the Bloss. Uh -huh. So I went to grade to uh, Brown. One or two of those years, we just had uh, correspondence. The teacher wasn't qualified, but the 
through correspondence with Dr. class. So grade eight, I moved into, we started in Estevan, Marie and I, and there was, we were so far behind, it was unreal. Oh. But uh, I made so much progress. Whew. Was that at collegiate then, grade eight? No, nope. nope. a, a separate school beside the church. St. Oh, John the Baptist, John. first day year it was St. built. St. Okay. But you went to collegiate though too, right? Then then to grade eight. It only went to grade eight. Oh. Then it took oh, nine so then. Like the high school yeah. then would be collegiate. Okay. And uh, there was only four of us that graduated there. That uh, what do you call that? Uh, didn't have to write exams. Oh, like recommend. Recommend. Or, yeah. yeah. Just four of us. I was one of them. Yeah. Wow. So you're went, very smart. That year did good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's impressive. Like, you went from way behind to yeah. recommend. Like yes. not having to write your tests. Mother Digna was a, my favorite, though. <laughs> She's like... Was it all nuns? Yeah. yeah. I still remember at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, their mail would come in. I have to walk downtown to the post office. That would be uh, on Main Street, right across the street from where the Orphan Theater is. Okay. And get the mail for her. Because uh, huh. I was doing the school pretty good, so that was my job. Pick up the mail. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What would your favorite class or favorite subject have been in school? What did you like the best? Oh, golly. Like math, science, English, yeah, art. I, Our kids is his recess. <laughs> I didn't have a favorite. No? That's okay. I do remember cheating one time. For oh, oh no! Did that all go record? That's no, okay. she shut it off. Yeah, yeah. I shut it off. Uh, it's grade eight. I got a higher mark than I should have got. Oh no. There was this Shire girl in front of me. I was in the very back seat because she would, the bad ones you put in front, the good no. ones in the back. So oh I got gosh. to the back, but she was in front of me and quite much bigger and I have to lean. Had her exam, I had to lean up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Social studies. <laughs> the year or something and I didn't have a clue. I thought I had the right answer because I got it up first. <laughs> so I got a better mark than I should have got on that one. <laughs> Um, did you have any teachers that you especially liked that you remember that influenced you or all your teachers you Mother just Digna said or not? Mother who? The principal, Mother Digna at, at the separate Dignut. school. Digna. Pardon? What was her name? Mother Digna. 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 Oh, okay. Digna. 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 She's not, she wasn't, like none of us would have known her. She left no. Esteban then or? Yeah, Bob and Atten had her. They didn't like her as much as me. They, oh, wow. She, we just... Yeah. Good, Sometimes yeah. you just click with yeah. people. Yeah. So yeah. What year did you grab? So you didn't graduate then. You didn't have a graduation no, of I any could sort. Have yeah. Um, did you do any special family celebrations for like Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever? Do you remember yeah. any special holiday celebrations that your family would have done together? I can remember as a little boy I went to where Dad grew up. That's just two miles east on the Dro Dole Farm. Or Oh. Farm. Yeah. We went there for Christmas. The priest was out, and Father Elbers. Wow. Then Grandpa I grew up where, where it goes, like that ranch yeah. farm? Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. The yeah. homestead, where Dad's dad homestead, was straight south. Weez's tree, south of Godmas trees, yeah. a big bunch of trees. Wow. That's where his dad homestead, but he lost it. He couldn't, oh, he couldn't whatever he had to do. He keep up the payments or yeah. whatever, yeah? yeah. Wow. So then he got on there and that's where the family grew up. Yeah. So Grandpa really didn't go too far from no. home then, like if that's no. where he was all the time. So um, so school sports, you said you were on a ball team. Did you yeah. do like any curling or yeah. anything like that? So you did that in school? No. No? I was through school already and uh, they built a curling rink at Outram and they'd go around to all the farmers in a 10 mile radius wanting donations to get this built. So uh, we give them donation. I'm sure the three brothers were there then already. And of course, Dad. At first it was Dad and C. Cassette and Sons. Bob yeah. wasn't involved, then he joined up. Um, anyway, they wanted a donation, but we had to curl. So we give them a donation and started curling. That's where, wow. And the majority of the curlers never threw a rock before that. Oh my so gosh. everybody's in the same boat yeah so they sort of built it on spec because they didn't even know if anybody was going to like it yeah you could see that <laughs> wow yeah. how, how long did you continue to 
continue curling after you were, because you curl, I remember you curling. Yeah. And there's pictures of you in a team of four that you won something, yeah. some yeah. event, uh, Joe Blackburn and yeah. you. Yeah. So how long did you keep curling? Oh, I curled, oh, you don't remember much as kids. Some of the kids all come, like, didn't have time, had to quit, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I curled till at least 10 years after I was married. Yeah. I yeah. One of the highlights, and I've probably yeah, told this story. Oh yeah, I remember sitting watching, and uh, yeah, you were curling the night Randy was born. Okay. Oh, yeah. We went, and, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you took mom to the hospital. Yeah. So. One of my highlights, the curling, and I probably told you this. We beat Garnet Campbell. <gasps> he had won the briar. He. We went to Crosby. that have an annual spiel in Crosby, a pickup team. And we curled in Crosby, and the very first game was against Garnet Campbell. Holy and we beat him. And we celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> the second time you got drunk. But yeah, okay. <laughs> That's married, where I learned how to mix milk with whiskey. Oh. <laughs> Dairy farmer, we, this one guy, Clement tells he promoted that. It's a good drink. Good drink. Oh. I liked it. I don't know why I don't. Pardon? Did it curdle? Yeah, it did, but it sure tasted oh. good. <laughs> yeah. Just chew it. Yeah. How so he won the second event and we didn't win anything. <laughs> he never lost were after. Were you married then? When you won? His yeah. Race? You were, eh? Okay. It would just be weekend spiels. I'd have to huh. talk nice to get to go. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time you were farming with your dad, how would, like if you had to go to a spiel, you, had to, you could get time off or how did that work? Well, when they first started out Trump, they worked it in with your working hours. Because we dairied, we couldn't take the early shift, or curling. It had to be the nine o'clock one. We couldn't take the seven one. And some guys, when they really, one time they had 30 some teams in that area. So if they had to start at five, there was a five o'clock draw, seven, and we always had to be the nine because we couldn't get there. Enough. Which would have been really hard because then you're up late and up yeah, early the next morning, morning yeah. to get, so but that. It was fun, yeah. you know. Huh? You graduated to just a uh, oh, the, the flapping, the, the rip rap or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you guys would have been strong sweepers because you guys were so strong. Yeah, so. It was kind of an act to that, but yeah, yeah we were good sweepers. Yeah. Who was your team? Uh, let's see, I had different teams. I skipped for a while. Oh. Adam played with me. Joe Blackburn, he was always playing with me. And who was the other one? That's okay. And then, and then as like that would be your home team, and then there'd be spiels, and like Lloyd Sub, they picked me up to go to the bigger oh, spiels because yeah. I guess I was average or pretty good for that rink. So uh, Joe and I would go with him. We'd go to Torquay and Estevan. Wow. The one time I had a a curling game in Estevan. And during a spiel with Lloyd Sabdi, and I'd curl at, might have been 8 o'clock, and I was done about 10.30. After the game, we drove all the way to Winnipeg. I was Court and Rose. Oh, <laughs> that was wow. five, four or five of us guys with a lot of beer and drove to Winnipeg. <laughs> we got there at 6 o'clock in the morning, went to Rose's brother, Paul's place. I don't know if they were expecting us or not, but <laughs> we made quite a commotion. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> Never went to bed that day, day. They all got dates. I was the only one that had a girlfriend that was Rose. One was Nick Yonner. Oh dear. <laughs> and, that was a bad influence. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Tarnas, her, her cousin. Oh yeah. yeah. They all got dates and we had quite a time. <laughs> Come back the next day or so. How did I get on Are we that? Are going to get to that courting? And... Yeah. Okay. How did you meet Mom? No. Through... Uh, uh, we had a priest start at work, young workers clubs. Oh, so every Wednesday, they rented the nice Columbus Hall and they had like, kind of their own band because this Victor could play, he's gay but doesn't matter, <laughs> he could play the organ. And it turned out the priest was too, we didn't know it at the time. <laughs> but he played the organ. I want to hear that story oh after. Gosh, yeah. Anyway, uh, on Sundays we would get sermons booked join this club and he was a good priest to get this organized 
And it got so a lot of people. Every Wednesday night we go to there. There, that's where I met her. She wasn't my first girlfriend, but that's where I met her. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a lot of other girlfriends before her? Not a lot. Yeah. Well, but yeah. I sampled a few. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Did Grandpa and Grandma like her when you first met her? See, I gotta think of that. I think so. <laughs> yeah, didn't even dislike her. Yeah. What did you like about her? What attracted you to her? Like her outgoingness, I think. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And her good looks out. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of your first memories of dates with her? Okay, the, I thought everybody knew the first date. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. It was it a, a New Year's... wasn't it? No. Pardon? That was a drive-in. Macoon dance. No, no? Yeah. New Year's Eve at Macoon. In oh, those okay. days they always had bands, live bands, and you weren't, they don't have liquor in the, in the dance hall. You'd have your own in your vehicle, <laughs> but that was illegal because the cops could catch you. Sometimes you'd plant it out in the field and go for it. <laughs> but anyway, that was our first date at Macoon, oh. New Year's Eve. So at, at uh, midnight, uh, you do all the things they do. And I drove her out to uh, to her folks' place oh and she introduced me. Oh my yeah. god. For your first date? Yeah. Holy. And I offered him a drink. I had a Mickey offer. Oh drink. my gosh. She'll never forget that Did offer. Take one? What? Did he take one? I think so. Wow. <laughs> I think so. So was that New Year's Day of 1962? And you were married in April or did you date her for a year and a half? About a year. Oh, okay. Cause then, so you uh, dated for a while and then she moved to she Winnipeg? She went to Winnipeg oh, for okay. nursing training. That was one of my next question. How oh. long did you date? That's oh, yeah. okay. No, this is this. That's <laughs> like, why it's good to have everybody. Yeah, yeah we started out in in the fall. In the fall, got to know her. The first date was New Year's, and then uh, the following April or May, she or maybe June or whenever she started school, uh, nursing in Winnipeg. So it was that fall. Then I went and seen her. A couple the times, Winnipeg. Yeah. 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 Wow. The one time I drove to Winnipeg, and there was a guy that uh, needed a ride. He advertised on the paper or radio or something. He needed a ride. Well, why not? I'm going by myself. Here he was an alcoholic, and we had to stop at the uh, places get liquor because <laughs> he would always run out before we get to <laughs> Winnipeg. I was careful, but I had enough. I should have drank that much, but I made it all right. How long would it take you to drive to Winnipeg? About five hours. Sounds and would you own your own time. vehicle by this point? Oh, or? no, that was Dad's. Wow. Like the, I'm going to guess it's not like now where a farm has ten vehicles. Like For you to yeah. have a vehicle to go date and go to Winnipeg and stuff, that's a big thing, right? My first vehicle was a half ton, but the farm used it too. So oh, if I needed nice. a courting thing, I'd use Dad's. Our, our honeymoon was Dad's station wagon. <laughs> Here he had left a bottle of whiskey underneath the seat and went across the line. And we didn't know a thing about it. And come back, first thing he looks inside and finds his whiskey bottle. <laughs> it was under the seat. Yeah. Do you remember your wedding day? Anything about your wedding day? Do you even know what the date of your wedding is and anything about your yeah, wedding day? April 25th. She would know the year. <laughs> the year Renee was born. <laughs> April 25th. <laughs> Where was it? Uh, in Estevan, and we went out to her farm at Macoon for the reception. Reception we had it in a hall at Macoon, and then to the farm for the party. Oh, okay. A reception and then a party. Yeah. It's all like yours. It's like your like Kyle. Okay, you have you feed them and then we you have you feed them and then we went out to the party. And yeah. <laughs> And who, do you remember your suit or your or mom's dress or anything? Do you remember anything about what you wore? And she still has her wedding dress and I still have my suit. Yeah. I kind of can wear it, but that, not the coat so much. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Do you remember who all your attendants were? Or any of them? My brother Atten and Nick Yonner. Yeah. And her sister Vicky and, oh, uh, 
think Mary Cernick. Mary Cernick. Don't I think so, yeah. And no flower girl or ring bear. Don't think so. Okay. I don't know. No, I um, don't think so. Do you remember what the weather was like that day? Yeah. Uh, we had a little rain and we had wind. Oh. And, and it was quite mild. Huh. James was our driver. Oh, so you have someone drive you around? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the whole wedding party is in the vehicle with you, or no, just, you, just, just the two of you? Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, the bridesmaids and best man rode another car. Oh. I think it was just her and I. Did Ella ride too? I, I, that I'm not sure. Well, that's okay. James was a chauffeur anyway. <laughs> so would you have had to like hire a photographer because you have a few pictures from your wedding day? You we have, have to go to uh, Jenny's studio to get oh, a picture okay. taken. Yeah. The whole wedding party would we had it. Okay. Probably a time you had to yeah. arrive and put the yeah. pictures. That's cool. Do you remember your first home and the homes you've lived in since you got married? When we got married, then we uh, rented a trailer. And camped it right in the yard. Okay. And uh, you rented that, or you rented owned it? Home? We rented it. There should be some pictures of it. Yeah. Our first huh. home the trailer. There's nothing fancy like any of these, but it was a trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we lived there. The deal was, Dad was buying this house from uh, Gustafson and McCoon, and he built. We got married in April, so we lived in there till fall, because he got the foundation built and they moved the house on. Then he moved from our house that he gave us, and then we left the trailer go. So we lived from April till maybe October in the trailer, and huh? let it go. Um, so you lived in the trailer, then in a house, yep. then... Then we built a new house and sold the old house. Yep. And then moved to town, yep. I guess. Then. Yeah, then yep. moved to town. Can you tell us anything about your kids' births? Birth. Births. The birth of your children. Oh. <laughs> when Erlene was born, she came early apparently, and I walked into the hospital, and Rose tells that story for so many people. My wife is pregnant, and there's something wrong. <laughs> 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 so, so she was born the next morning or something. What time were you born? I don't know. Two o'clock. Two o'clock? Okay. And of course, those days, the men were never allowed. Yeah. 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 The one I remember the most was Randy's. Of course. <laughs> yeah. She skips ahead a little bit, huh, Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> I remember mine because I was so big. We I might have. Elaine Gennett tells me about how big you are. Uh, uh, are you sitting down? Rose Cassette just had this 12 pound baby. And like there was, was big news in the hospital, oh, according to I Elaine think Gennett. When you were born, I took you to the hospital, took her to the hospital. Weren't you born in the afternoon or something? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I went and helped Jane shingle his house while oh, she was while she was getting married. Yeah, because you wait for a phone did, call. Though, you yeah. do not yeah. you don't interfere. You stay away. Yeah. So tell us about Randy. Okay. You said you remember Randy. I think it was Randy. Oh, maybe it wasn't. It might have, at a curling game. Her water broke, and but we were just spectators. Oh, I think it was the. Uh, oh, the Richardson brothers were curling, and oh, everybody had gosh. to go watch that. They were down Esteban Curly, just a demonstration. They charge you, so her water broke and she was so embarrassed, making a mess. Got her to the hospital, <laughs> to the hospital, and I met up with Johnny Mickle. He brought his wife in. Oh my God! And uh, he had a she had a boy too. Neither one of us had any boys. Like, oh, it, oh uh, yes, because they're so, all those girls. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Left her off, he left his wife off. Just come to my house. So he lived, <laughs> Tony Mickle lived straight south of our place. Oh, yeah. Just two miles straight south, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And uh, okay, we partied, just him and I, <laughs> and we partied. So one o'clock in the morning, that's enough. I got to get home. In those days, you didn't worry about cops. You know, you just drive. Yeah. As long as you could see the road, you drive. <laughs> so I got home and I was sound asleep. And Apparently, Rose tried to wake me. She couldn't. Oh, <laughs> There's no way I'd wake up. Oh my goodness! And so she ended up phoning my mom, who lived in the other house. Okay. Said she got a baby son. Oh. <laughs> so about next morning, doing milk, and Dad had to tell me oh, about her son. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so you wouldn't have goodness. known before they were born if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Oh, no. No. Never had those. And you don't remember what happened to the rest of us kids? Where were we when Roberta and Randy were born? Where was Randy? Did I party, you mean? 
No, where, where, who looked after us when you, when mom went her to the mom hospital? Did some babysitting? Auntie Don't you Irene. remember? Her mom did. When something. Randy was born, Auntie Irene looked after oh? us. Oh, she lived in the in. same yard, right? Yeah. Oh, she lived with her parents. And mom came in and she told us, kids, dad's going to take me to the hospital. But Auntie Irene's coming right over to look after you. Huh? So, yeah, I remember her being there a lot. That's interesting too, because things I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the birds? I don't remember that one. I, I remember trying to figure out a name for Roberta because oh. Dad had all of us yeah. names, so that's why she decided yeah. she didn't really yeah. want to. I that. talk to people. My mom's first name was they kind of looked at you. Yeah, I, know. Just... <laughs> I have a personal one that you can say no if you don't want to answer. So you guys were expecting before you were married. What was it like at that time to tell both of your parents? Was it brutal or it was just? Do you remember yeah. telling your mom and dad that you were? It was brutal. Was it? Yeah. What was their reaction thing? Dad took it pretty good. <laughs> I didn't have to tell Mom, just told Dad. <laughs> yeah. Would you have been in the barn and working yeah. with them and telling them we, that? We yeah. were washing machines going to the house for breakfast. I had to tell them. And uh, so I did. I had a few tears. Yeah. <laughs> what about um, Grandma and Grandpa Messer? I didn't have to tell them. <laughs> Rose did look after oh, us. <laughs> she was living in Winnipeg at the time, though, right? Oh, no, no, nope. she was back in this. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was oh. back in She'd quit. Oh. I think she wanted to get married. Oh, we got engaged while she was in, in Winnipeg. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then she came back to Estevan. She quit shortly after that. She had odd jobs around Estevan. What, what? Tell us about your engagement. How did you ask her to marry her? Well, I think she asked me, and I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, might, she might deny there. that, but I think it's the truth. She was well, looking for an excuse to get out of school. Yeah. She, right. said, she said she won't get interviewed, so I, it's all got to be too bad. <laughs> I remember we, we, we decided we were going to get engaged. I picked, my, my, on my own, I picked up rings in Estevan, went to Winnipeg, she was in Winnipeg, and her folks were there too. And, I don't know if there's something special at that time. There was something to do with schooling, because she never graduated, but there was something. And uh, so I presented her with the ring, and I think I asked her dad if it was okay if we, Aww. and uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did you get down in one knee? No, nothing nope. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know how her parents reacted then? They liked me, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, you gave them whiskey. Gave them a whiskey, first, yes. The first date, of course. Yeah. Um, or dad was, her mom was pretty proud because a dairy farmer. That was kind of up. Oh, <laughs> a dairy farmer. <laughs> and then they met with my folks and they just clicked it off like you wouldn't believe. They went on trips together. Really? Her folks and my folks, they went to, uh, in uh, North Dakota, they had relatives there in, oh, it's not far from uh, Bismarck, not Bismarck. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They both had relatives. They spent one whole weekend there together. Wow. And they did that something Williston? else. Pardon? Was it Williston? Yeah, well, in south of Williston a wee bit. Okay. Yeah, where they have that those plays, right close oh, to yeah, the yeah. Spearfish oh, or something? Yeah. Medora. Medora. yeah, but it wasn't Medora. Just to, they had a dairy farm, too, by the way. Who did? Well, these people they visited. Oh. And that was interesting to Dad, and uh, but he was related to, I think Rose's side, and then there was some of his side too, or Mom's side. I forget. Oh my! She would know some of those things better than me. Yeah. That's okay. We're so interviewing you. Grandpa okay. and his brother both started dairy farms. Was that like a thing at the time, or? Uncle Francis started a little later than Dad. Oh okay. Because uh, Grandpa's uh, older, or is Uncle? No. Uh, that story, see when dad first started, dad always milked cows. When we were at Garnell's place, mom milked half a dozen cows by hand. And then she hired some help, either they had to babysit us kids, it was just Marie and I, but maybe I might have been born there too, I'm not sure. And then the, they'd take us out in the barn and put us in some box stall and they'd milk. Some, you know, something that we wouldn't get into trouble. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but then when they moved to the other farm, Dad just kept on milking. I was seven years old when we got the first milking machine, and Dad hated it. 
So I learned how to run the milkers and he continued milking by hand. Wow. And mom would come out to milk. She was a better milker than dad. Yeah. Oh my god. Quicker milker. Yeah. Isn't that and awesome. I run the machine. And then it machine he finally give in, I guess they're all right. And so then <laughs> I'd milk quicker than they would, so it got then we got the second machine. And then finally he just give in, we just milked them all the machine. Were those machines like the buckets we know? Yeah, not the original ones were right way, they were long and they hung differently on the cow, but they hung underneath the cow. Then we switched to Surge, which is a much better machine. And we still have them today at the farm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, like we switched to, to pipeline milking, but for the old barn, we still milk with the Surge buckets to carry the milk over. Huh. Yeah. That's all the questions I just, is there anything, any message? Well, I wanna know more, so then Grandpa did Dairy, Uncle Francis, and Julia, right? Yeah, they dairy farm. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, that's to really finish that three story. Of kids ended up yeah. Dairy. yeah, to finish that story, uh, we were dairy, but at that time you could ship cream, not yeah. fluid milk, ship anything. And Uncle Francis lived where Madding and School was, just on the east side with Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert never oh, married. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uncle Bert always had money, so he built the dairy barn and we're just a mile east for Uncle Francis. That's when he got dairy. Then. Oh. Uncle Francis was sickly. He died, you know, pretty young. And then Uncle Leah, and they lived in the valley, in Aunt Julia, and they got started dairy and moved up on top. And, Dairy too, but Dad was the first one. Siblings. Well, it was the three all along. I knew it was the three, but I never thought of them we as being siblings. siblings. Yeah. When I went to Estevan School, uh, I'd pick up Francis' kids and Uncle Ian's kids ah. with that station wagon. Probably the same one we got married in. I think it was. Yeah. And I didn't even have a license, but I had to park in a special <laughs> spot. Then in November of that year, I got licensed, so it was legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have any questions they want to ask? I want to get, well, to you, I can't remember your birth, when you were born. Do you remember anything, stories about you? <laughs> Do you heard. remember your birth? Anything that you've what heard? What I did or? Yeah, no, I haven't heard anything. I think yeah. the big thing I remember around Randy's birth was the Texas Mickey that was bought. Well, that all went with it too, yeah. yeah. But that's the only Texas Mickey that was bought. But None we the celebrated rest of us girls. long before we knew we had a boy. As soon as we had a boy, I had to get this Texas Mickey. <laughs> Then Johnny Mickles, his wife was a false alarm. Aaron oh. was born a week or two weeks oh, later. So she, he, he was celebrating and he didn't even have a baby. <laughs> no, he didn't even have one. No. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to the housing thing because that. So when you guys moved there, Grandma and Grandpa moved to where Uncle Bob's is now, yep. right? And they still had Auntie, Auntie Irene, so that's why she kind of looked right. after everybody. Yeah. yeah, Irene was still going to school, I think. Okay. Yeah. So you were in a trailer and they were over, they yeah. were, okay. And they built that house? They moved it on, built oh, the foundation, okay. then moved the house on. They were living in the house we Yeah, the original, grew up. yeah. So they had to move right. the Uncle Bob's house on so yeah. they could get in there so Mom and Dad could and get in the barrel. And they had like barrel. two or three kids at the time when they moved in, like still at home. Yeah, I think both boys, right, and Auntie Irene. Well, yeah. yeah. Then Dad moved to Estevan and Irene went with Mom and Dad, yeah. of course. And Bob and Anton batched in that yeah. house yeah. for yeah. a year or two. And then along comes, they both got married the same year. Yeah. And then, well, who's going to get the house? They both wanted it. They flipped the coin. I flipped the oh coin. They had the name gosh. Eds or Tails. And I forget, I think Bob won because he got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Then Anton had to move across the road to build. Well, he didn't have to, but that was our land. That's what he chose to do, and he was sure happy he did yeah. because it separates the families. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow, I had not heard that story. Didn't flip you? The coin. Did you? Yeah. 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 Flip the coin. Yeah. I remember Irene at, at Grandma and Grandpa's in town. With, you know, her her room was across from Grandma and Grandpa's room upstairs there. Yeah. You remember I, that? I remember that too. Yeah. yeah. Auntie Irene and I were very close. Yes. I went with her when she broke up. She was engaged to somebody before Uncle Peter. I went with her to give the ring back. Is that wow. right? I don't know what boyfriend it was. We and were really close. That. Like you were she was always at our house. Fairly close in age, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. And I went in to see her lots, and 
Yeah, we, yeah, well, her and I were Any idea what year Aunt Irene was born? I was nine years old. The reason I remember so that, Dad nine. had bought a new swath, <laughs> and I was out swathing. <laughs> like, you know, kids, we were young when we bought the field. Yeah. Blackburns were different. Blackburns, Dad would always say, those kids are going to be lazy. Like, I knew how to run a tractor when I was five, six years old. Randy did, too. Yeah. Well, so did you, I suppose. But anyway, <laughs> I was out swathing of this new swather. I'm a pretty important guy and a pretty good crop. The day they brought Irene home from the hospital, Mom was pretty proud. I go in for supper, just come off the swather, having supper. Mom says, don't you want to go see your new baby sister? Ah, uh, no, I wasn't interested. <laughs> I still remember that. That uh, just didn't interest me at all. I can't. I think she coaxed me, so I went in. It was not just important. To be <laughs> yeah. Oh my. So, like, I didn't know much about her ring because it's quite a difference in age. Like, she was the youngest of the family, but she did a good job looking after mom mm -hmm. when dad passed on. She, she really did a good job. Yeah. I remember Raleen and Aunt Irene being very close. Yeah. Yeah. So is there any messages you want to leave with your kids or your grandchildren? What would be some advice you'd give to the young people of today? Or the old people? Your kids are getting a little bit old. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You always need a positive attitude. Hard work. Always believe in that. Religion? Well... I was never strong religion, but we always went to church every Sunday, more by habit. Like I always liked to believe in a heaven and a hell, and I still think if I really believed in a heaven, hell, I'd want to die tomorrow, because you meet all your people that you love. Yeah. But there's some doubts there. But I, yeah, I believe you got to have religion, honest, honesty. Yeah. All right. I want to go back to that. Where was church? Like you would load up five kids in a station wagon and drive to Estevan mm -hmm. to go to church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday. You don't remember that? You well, when, no, know her. The station when wagon. he was young, oh, though. When he was young. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. When who? When I was young. Yeah. 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 Your siblings. Did you guys go to church every single oh. Sunday? Oh, yeah. Huh? Dad didn't have a station wagon then either. That but was did you get to Estevan? Or? Yeah. That's the one. The horse and buggy? Yeah. When the roads were blocked. Yeah. But, but, not a horse and buggy, like a sleigh. I don't think we ever made it. We were daring, I can remember when the roads blocked, and he had to take a team of horses and these cans of milk into Estimate. And took, you know, hours to team of horses. Took most of the day to get back. Yeah. And I hated those days because I had to do extra work, cleaning the barn by hand and all that stuff. Wow. Do you remember building the new barn from the old barn? I do. 1957, that was the year I quit school. Yeah. And we he got married. Building, the year the new barn was built, but he doesn't remember any of his kids' birthdays, no, I don't. any of his I'll, siblings. I'll get the shingles on there that said, spelt oh, Esther yeah. Farms and all uh, that. Dwayne Marcott was a, he was a good friend of us. We met through this young workers too, and he married one of Rose's girlfriends that went to Magoon School and known him well. We need a carpenter to add on to this part. Originally, there was no shingles on the first part. We added on, we doubled the length of it. 65, I think that was. Anyway, so Dwayne was our carpenter, and he said, he went home one night, and he says, we're going to shingle it. How would it be to put your name on the shingles? I said, well, big good idea. Isn't that a lot of extra work? Well, it's somebody. He says, I, may, I drew it all out on the paper, how I have to do it. Let's go for it. So. No extra money, we just oh, put all our wow. names on it. Yeah. <laughs> the state with our name on it for a long time, oh, but yeah. we had to reshingle it. And then Randy put tin on now. See, right over top of the name set. Added on twice then. For that yeah, part. then we added on again. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The second time, I think we did it ourselves. We added on the second time. That's just the calf barn at the back, though. Yeah, okay. We That's did it all our own part. work. Partnership with your brothers? Not really. I've always bragged that we get along so well because of just three of us. If there'd have been four or two, you never settle an argument. 
there has to be a somebody wins out. If there's two against one, you had to give in. You may not like it, but you had to give in. And that settled all their arguments. My daughter-in-law, Kathy, has a question for you. She asked, how do you, how does a marriage survive working on a farm? With three brothers in the same yard? No, nope, just how do you work a marriage and farming? It worked out great for us, but we, I've never had any marriage problems. Just, yeah, like she said I thought more of the cows than her. She might have been right. <laughs> <laughs> Cows were important. Yeah. <laughs> we would always milk on time, and yeah. yeah. And we liked our cows. Like there's certain favorite cows. Yeah. Like to show them a little bit. And, yeah. Mm. I remember taking them to Regina in the in the old Fargo, the 1964 Fargo. Yeah. We take a load up to Regina to the fair. Yeah. Maybe that was the first time Raylene got drunk. I don't know. Well, no, <laughs> I didn't, we didn't show it that year. Uh, <laughs> But we, I thought we had the stock trailer we took them up in. We, we did both. I remember both. Oh. Yeah. Huh. yeah. The first year we showed, well, we always showed an Esteban, always. But now, you know, you kind of get, well, you like this. So we're going to show in Moose Jaw. Because her sister, Doris, lived in Moose Jaw at the time. We almost canceled out. We had entered and everything. And, and uh, uh, about, Three or four days before the show, I lost my voice like Rhonda does. Oh yeah. I couldn't speak. And I didn't feel too bad. Oh, the hell with it. Go anyway. So we went there, and after one day of drinking, my voice came back. I was fine. Lubricant. 4-H growing up was that a big part of you guys oh, growing up? Oh, very much. Yeah? That was almost like religion. Dad loved 4-H. He was our 4-H leader for a number of years. Yeah. I was a 4-H member from the time I was 10 till I was 21. I, I think 21. I got married at 21, but then I and it think was I always dairy or did you ever have beef? Always dairy. Okay. We'd buy beef cattle because there's no dairy club till Bob come along and then we formed a dairy club and he was in both beef and dairy. Hmm. Atten had the reserve champion of the fair one year. Remember wow. that? And the calf is a nice calf. We had a milk cow that it would suck, that we didn't have mastitis trouble. So, boy, it was fat. <laughs> it sucked. That was kind of illegal. You're not supposed to do that in 4-H. <laughs> kind of cheating, but no one knew. <laughs> so, he wasn't that old, and uh, the calf stepped on his foot. He actually said he had a broken toe, didn't know it at the time. It took so long to heal. So I had to show it. Matt gets all the credit, but I was the leader. <laughs> yes, reserve champion of the show. And you always got pretty big dollars because they always made sure the grand and reserve got pretty big money. Oh, this is beef, Lori. Oh, beef. Oh, beef. Oh. Dairy was, we only had one club. Never had to show much over the province. A little bit. We went to Saskatoon one time. Oh, yeah. You showed, and yeah. I think you yeah. showed. Yeah. Yeah. When you were pretty. Uh, yeah. times. Actually. Fornwall drove, and we. Put them all in yeah. Saskatoon. Yeah. We did so Regina we have the beef too. Calves from, we have to buy them. To buy them from somebody. Else. Every fall, that was a big deal. Dad like just would let us decide where we wanted, but we go to this guy's herd more by reputation. Oh, he got good cattle. So we had our mind made up. We we're going to pick one from that herd. Some were wilder than hell. <laughs> <laughs> have to get them corralled and load them up, haul them home. Did the huh. girls do it too, or just the boys? In uh, your family, just to... Marie got married. Yeah, Marie might have. You know, I don't know if Marie was ever in 4-H, that the boys definitely were. And I don't know, Irene might have been only in dairy, not in yeah, beef. Yeah, she's probably too young. Yeah, yeah. I, would, huh. I would guess that too. Wow. Well, I'm going to stop the interview now, but we want to thank Dad for sharing all of his memories and his wisdom with us and wish him all the best. Well, we love you. you. <laughs> so this will be... For history, it'll be in the, books, the book of history. Yeah. I hope you cut out some of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be 